make sure that this is taking the right picture. <coughs> So 3-1 talks about angle relationships and um, most specifically on parallel lines. And we're going to talk about something called the transversal. So you have some vocabulary that I want you to <coughs> fill in. You're going to work a lot with parallel lines. Parallel lines are two lines in a plane that never meet. They never ever intersect. So you need to write that down. <laughs> Skew lines are going to be also two lines that don't intersect, but they're not in the same plane. So for instance, these would be an example of two lines in the same plane that don't intersect, right? To make them skew, and I could put a plane between these. To make them skew, all I have to do is turn one in opposite direction. Is there any way I could possibly make a plane that would that both of these would be in? I don't see how. And so these lines will never intersect either. They're not considered parallel, they're called skew. And so skew lines, similar to parallel lines, they also don't intersect but they're in different planes. A transversal is just a line that intersects two or more lines, so it has to intersect at least two lines or more in a plane at different points. So the transversal will be in the same plane as the lines that it is intersecting. And I'll show you a picture of that. Actually, you can see a picture of that to the right of your notes right now. That diagonal line in your notes is the transversal. The two horizontal lines are your parallel lines. Then we're going to talk about angle relationships. So there's that picture I was just talking about. There are different types of angles on this picture. I've got them labeled 1 through 8. And depending upon what pair of angles we're talking about depends upon the relationships. What kind of relationships do you see right now that you're well aware of right now? <coughs> angle 1 and angle 2. What do you know about them? They're supplementary. What else are they called? They're adjacent. What else is more important? They're a linear pair. <coughs> okay, so you see a lot of linear pairs on here. 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 5, 7, 6, 8, and 7, 8, right? And that's whether or not these lines are parallel. Those relationships will still exist. Then we've got this thing called exterior angles. If I take and I put this right here and this right here. And so you can use your pencils instead. You're going to see that there are four angles on the inside between the two lines, right? And aren't there four angles on the outside of those two lines? See seven and eight and one and two? That's how you determine whether they're interior versus exterior. So your exterior angles are 1 and 2 and 7 and 8. Use proper angle notation. And then your interior angles are the 3, 4, 5, and 6. So those parallel lines split it into the interior versus the exterior. Then if we look at just the interior, so I guess I'll put these back here. 
you look at just those interior angles, the three, four, five, and six, they do have relationships among them. We have what are called consecutive interior angles. What do you think consecutive means? Give me an example of something that's consecutive. Like what's consecutive integers? Well, seriously, you learned these last year. What are consecutive <coughs> integers? Say that again. <coughs> in order, what do you mean? Give me an example. Perfect. So in order, one, two, three, four, those are, that's consecutive. So when we talk about consecutive interior angles, they also have to be in order. And they have to follow along the line of this transversal. So three and five are called consecutive interior angles together as a pair. And then four and six as a pair is another set of consecutive interior angles. And they have to go in pairs. So unlike the exterior and the interior angles, which can go separately, the consecutive interior angles have to go in pairs. <coughs> and so I want you to write this next to, to the left of the consecutive interior angles. Sometimes they're referred to as same side interior angles, and that makes sense because they're on the same side of the transversal. You'll hear me calling them consecutive interior. Sometimes referred to as same side interior angles for the consecutive interior, yes. Then we have alternate exterior angles. So we're looking at <coughs> seven and eight and one and two. Those are your exterior angles, right? What do you think alternate exterior angles might be? They also come in pairs. Just give a stab in the dark. What do you think? One would be paired up with what? What would be alternate to one? Eight. Because one and two would be considered perhaps next to each other, so they really can't be alternate. If you have them on opposite sides of the transversal, see how one is on the left and eight is on the right? Those are alternate exterior angles, and so that means two and seven would be the other pair. <coughs> You do have to recognize these types of angles because when we have parallel lines, they're going to have a special relationship. So what do you think the alternate interior angles are going to be? If 1 and 8 and 2 and 7 were alternate exterior angles, what would be alternate interior angles? Three and six and <coughs> four and five, exactly. So alternate interior angles have to be on alternating sides of that transversal as well. Bless you. So when you get home tonight, you're going to have um, a picture in your homework. And it's uh, some, a couple of the pictures are complicated. You need to redraw them in your homework. And I would take pencils or even better, spaghetti, uncooked spaghetti. Take spaghetti and just like I have here and put them on the parallel lines or the two lines that are being cut by the transversal. And um, because they may not be parallel. So whatever two lines are being cut by the transversal, put your spaghetti on those lines so you can see the interior versus the exterior and it will help. The last angles that we're gonna look at are corresponding angles. <coughs> And corresponding angles just mean angles that are in the same position. These four angles right here are a group. And these four angles right here are another group. In each of these groups, there's a position number. So, for instance, it doesn't matter how they turn this picture. You can turn your page back and make 
this group right, or however it seems right in your head. In other words, isn't one in the upper left position? And isn't two in the upper right position? And isn't three in the lower left position? And four is in the lower right position. See what I mean? So then in this group right here, it has exactly the same positions. Upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right. So what angle corresponds to angle one? Five. Five. What corresponds to four? Eight. What corresponds to seven? Three. And what corresponds to two? Six. So those are your four sets of corresponding angles. They are in the same position. So make sure you write down all four pairs. And if I were you, I would put this on a flashcard. I would have on the front this picture right here. And then also on the front, I would have exterior angles. And on the back, put the exterior angles. Then do another card. Same picture, but do a different word, interior angles. And so you should have one, two, three, four, five, six cards that you should make from this picture. Because it's incredibly important that you know when I say exterior angles what I'm talking about. Or if I say alternate interior angles, what I'm talking about. Because in a minute they're going to have some relationships tomorrow. Next slide. All right, so you need to go get a textbook. Turn to page want to, you can draw this picture on your notes so that you can see it for future reference. <clears throat> Alright, so based upon that figure, the very first question that you have would be to name all the planes that are parallel to the plane ADH. Remember that planes are named with three letters and three letters only. There is no notation in front or above it. The fact that it's just these three letters should let you know that it is a plane. And so find ADH and trace it with your fingers. ADH. Doesn't that belong to this front face right here? So on a box, what would be parallel to a front face? What would be parallel to the front face? Here's the front. What's parallel to the front? The back. So which plane on here represents the back? Name all four letters that make up that plane. B, K, G, C. But you can only use three out of those four letters. So there's all kinds of ways you could name it. You could name it B, C, G, B, K, G, C, G, K, however you want to name it. That's one plane that's parallel. Are there any other planes parallel to this? 
and you can use a textbook, although it's not a cube, but we can use a textbook to represent this. So here's my front and here's my back. Are there any other planes parallel to this front face? No. So that's the only plane. And it happens to be main, named BCG on here. Then the second question says, name all segments that intersect at AT. So here's AT right here. Give me a segment that intersects at AT. Say it loudly. CA, there's one. What else? KT, what else? You got two, there's more. TH, two more. DA and BA. So use proper notation because they're segments, right? <coughs> so I put these three on there. It's also TH and TK, right? And then your next question, name all segments that are parallel to AT. So here's AT. Remember, parallel lines are in the same plane. So what plane or planes contain AT? Here it is right here. Isn't this AT right here? What planes contain this line? The front face, right? And the side face, correct? No other plane contains, remember, because the intersection of two planes is a line. So those two planes contain that line. So this face and this side face right there contain that line. So any lines that don't intersect AT would be, that are in those planes would be considered parallel. So there's only two. What's one? DH, that's parallel, right? What's the other one? BK. BK is the other one that's parallel. Oh, did I miss one? Oh, yeah. CG, why? Couldn't I put a plane diagonally through that box? Even though you don't physically see it. And they have drawn a line here. But even though you don't physically see it, I could actually finish drawing another plane right here. Wouldn't this be a plane right there? So therefore, AT and CG are in the same plane. Forgot about that. And then your last question. Name all segments that are skew to CG. So here's CG. Skew segments are not in the same plane, and they don't intersect. So what is a line that is not in the same plane as CG? And so that would include what, the side face here? And wouldn't it include the back face? So you can't have any lines that are in those faces be skewed to CG. So give me a line that you think might be skewed. Here's CG right there. What would be skewed to it that doesn't ever intersect it? KT? No, AT is parallel. Right? Um, AD would be skew because it would look like this. There's my book. So if this is CG, then A, would you say AD? Wouldn't AD be right here? Are they going to intersect? Nope. So there's one. What else? Whatever is parallel to AD will also be skew to CG. So won't TH be skew? Right? What else? Is that it? What about TK? Will TK ever intersect with CG? And are they in the same plane? No. However, why isn't HG, it's parallel to that, why is HG not going to be skew? It's in the same plane, right? 
So you've got TK, TH, AD, and then AB. Oh, we didn't mention AB. But here's AB. It's not going to intersect with CG ever. So you've got that one here and CG's here. So you're looking for them to really be pointed in opposite directions. All right, so you can close your book up for the moment. Thank you. So here you have a lovely picture. You essentially have three transversals. If this is going to be the transversal right here, what two lines is it intersecting? This one and this one. Are those two lines parallel? No, but you still have interior, exterior angles. You still have alternate interior, alternate exterior. You still have corresponding angles. So this is a different picture than that very first one that I gave you, and this is where your pencils or your uh, spaghetti noodles will become uh, very handy. So I've got some questions for you. First question, well, all six are thrown up here now. I want you to identify what types of angles these are. What are their names? What's the relationship? And here's what I would do. Um, if I were you, let's just start with A. Angle six and angle 10. I want you to follow angle 6 and angle 10 with your finger. Connect angle 6 and angle 10 with your finger. When you do that, you're actually tracing the transversal. I don't want to see heads on the desks. Every day I have to tell this class, get your heads off your desks. Don't lean on it, nothing. So this is my transversal right here. And this is asking to identify those pairs. So if that's my transversal, I want to switch and put my spaghetti noodles or whatever right here. I'm ignoring this group of angles here because they are not on that transversal with 6 and 10. So you don't want to look at these angles. Are 6 and 10 on the interior of my two lines that are being intersected by that transversal or are they on the exterior? They're in the interior. So are they consecutive interior angles or are they alternate interior angles? Are they on the same side of the transversal or alternating sides of the transversal? Six and ten. Same side, right? So what's same side? Consecutive. So those ones are consecutive interior. And you have a quiz next week, and your quiz is going to look somewhat like this. And you're going to have pairs of angles like this that you have to name. All right, then go to B. Look at 9 and 11. So I want to trace 9 and 11 with my finger. As I trace it with my finger, do you see the transversal? Because one of the things that they're going to ask you is, what is the name of the transversal? Well, these lines aren't named. But if they were, this would be my transversal. So if this is my transversal, the other two lines are being cut. So there's the one line. And there's the second line. So I'm looking at 9 and 11. Are they on the interior in between these lines or on the outside? Interior again. Are they same side or alternating side of the, in, of the transversal? So what kind of interior angles are they? Alternate interior angles. Good. Then look at 1 and 5. Trace 1 and 5 with your finger. Find the transversal. You might feel silly doing this, but some of you can't see the transversal. So here's the transversal, 1 and 5. I'm going to put my markers up for the lines that are being intersected. So here's 1, and here's 5. Um, oh, did I do that wrong? I did that totally wrong. Isn't this a transversal, right? So I'm ignoring this group of angles right here because they don't belong on this transversal. So I'm just looking at the angles on this transversal alone. So is 1 and 5 
Are they both inside? Are they both outside? Or do you have one of each? I don't see one here, do you? So five's inside, where's one? It's on the outside. So you have an exterior angle and an interior angle. So go back to that first sheet. It cannot be alternate or consecutive interior angles. It cannot be alternate exterior angles. What's left? Corresponding. Are they in the same position? So you have to kind of develop your own sense of position. As I look at these, isn't one in the upper left? Right? And is five in the upper left of these four? Yes. They are both in the same position. That's why they're corresponding angles. So one and five are corresponding. All right, do three and eight, seven and 12, and four and eight yourself. And let's see how you do. Determine if they're inside, outside, one of each. surprising to me that some of you aren't taking notes. Yeah. What do you get to these notes on the quiz and also for use on your homework? Your job in here is to take notes. Unless you're a straight 100% student, you should take notes. All right, I want you to talk about those relationships for the D, E, and F with people around you. See if they have the same answer because everybody should have the same answer. So try to watch yourselves. So you need to work doubly hard to catch up. That's absolutely right. You don't sit there and do nothing. All right. Three and eight are alternate exterior. Here's their transversal. <coughs> These are the two lines that are being cut. <coughs> Aren't both three and eight on the exterior because you can't see them, right? And aren't they on alternating sides of the transversal? So alternate exterior angles make sense. What's 7 and 12? What would you say? What would you say again? Alternate interior? Correct. So they are both on the inside. They are on alternating sides of the transversal. And what's four and eight? So we're only looking at this transversal here. Ignore the 12. What would you say about four and eight? Corresponding. You have one that's inside and one that's outside. This one's in the upper right position. This one's in the upper right position for those as well. So corresponding is correct. Last one.
All right, so for this one, we've got a somewhat similar figure as the one that was above it, just more triangular. Um, and then this is line L, this is line M, and this is line T. So here are your questions. Question A. Identify the transversal to lines L and M. So L and M are the lines that are being cut. There's only three lines on here, right? So if L and M are the lines being cut, what's the transversal? Yeah, the one that is left over. So it has to be T. And then the second question, identify the special name given to each pair of angles. You ready? Seven and 12. Follow that transversal with your finger, which is T. Put your pencils on the two cut lines and see, are seven and 12 both inside, both outside, or one of each? So what do you think they are? Why corresponding? One's inside and one's outside. Isn't this in the lower right? Isn't this in the lower right? So corresponding is correct, good. And then eight and 10. What do you think? Eight and 10. So if these are my lines being cut, eight and 10 are both on the inside and you do have alternating sides of that transversal. Alex? If I put my lines, so take your pencils and put your pencils right here. So we're ignoring this group of angles here because this is our transversal. So these four angles are the ones that are inside. So once you put those barriers up, it's a lot easier to see it. And because they're on alternating sides of that transversal, it is alternate interior angles. And this is a visual thing. If you're not spatially gifted, this can be hard for you to see. Some of you are like, I don't get why people don't see that. That's because you, your brain is wired that way. You two can stay after class and talk to me today, <laughs> both of you girls. All right, two and 12. So again, look at your pencils for your barriers. What do you think 2 and 12 are? Yeah, both 2 and 12 are on the outside, and they are on alternating sides of the transversal. So they are alternate exterior angles. I think that's it, or I might have one more. We're going to double check. Do you have that written down? That was it. <laughs>